walk by faith and not by sight. Lord, gracious words we hear from him who spoke as honor spoke, and we believe him here. We may not touch his hands and side, nor follow Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I'm Father Kevin Clinton. I'm a friend and a classmate of uh, Father Bob, and Father Bob's on leading a retreat this morning, and it's my privilege to be with you here to celebrate the Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and their communion in the Holy Spirit be with all of you. With your spirit. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let's call to mind our weaknesses, our vulnerabilities, our need for forgiveness and healing. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you for it is full and lasting happiness to serve you with constancy, the author of all that is good. We ask these things through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let's be seated to hear God's word. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks. are those who love you, happy those who follow you, blessed are those who seek you, O God. Happy all those who fear the Lord and walk in God's pathways, you will find what you long for, the riches of Blessed are those who seek you, 
small shall be like a fruitful vine in the midst of your home. Your children flourish like olive plants, rejoicing at your table. Bless our reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness. For that day to overtake you like a thief, for all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew jesus told his disciples this parable a man was going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them to one he gave five talents to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. He then went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing an additional five. He said, Master, 
You gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come and share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter? Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest in return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But the one who has not, even what he has, will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Gospel of the Lord. My friends, the scriptures help us understand the lay of the land of our human condition. Because you and I always don't read who we are and where we are accurately. The scripture wants us to wake up, to see and understand ourselves clearly. And that's what this parable, to me, for me this morning, is about. Who are we? Or who am I, maybe, is the better question. Who am I? In the parable, you have a master who owns things, and you have three servants. They're called Servants, note that. And they receive resources, and they are to, they are in charge of them. They are to use them as they see fit. You know, the question, who am I and what I should do, is something we ask from the very beginning of our, of our lives. And this parable says to me, that we are charged to make something of ourselves and that we are to remember that we are accountable to the one who gave us time and space and ability. We are accountable to that one for what we do with the gift that we've been given. And it is a gift. It is not something that we possess because we earned it. It is a gift given by God. And we are challenged to use that gift the way the giver intended it to be used. So all of us occasionally maybe find ourselves in in the situation where we think it's all about us, that we are accountable to no one or no thing, that Uh, what I want is what I should get. Well, I've noticed in my life, I'm very fortunate that I didn't get some of the things that I wanted. And that some of the most valuable things in my life, I didn't even ask for. They just came to me. And they enriched and deepened and brought meaning to my life. 
I remember uh, being in high school and I went to Cleveland Public School in Cleveland, Minnesota, which is out by La Center in St. Peter, Minnesota. It's a small school and my dad was very good in football, but I was a little guy, you know. I was 120 pounds in high school and I mandated myself to please my father to go out for football. Okay, fine. Uh, I was a 120 pound tackle for the Cleveland High School football team. Not a good idea. In fact, uh, when Gary Gerke was across from me in what was known as the hamburger line and we ran into each other, I flew upside down and came directly down on my shoulder and broke my collarbone and I was very happy that that happened because I didn't have to play football after that. It didn't fit. It wasn't me. It wasn't what I was to be. What, it wasn't what I was to do with my life. And there's been plenty of other examples on that too. You notice in the parable that one servant got five, another got two, and another got one. All according to their ability, to the talent that they would bring to the time and space and ability that God had given them. And, but they were to use them. They were to engage the investment that the master had given to his servants. And so I am in the same place. I am to do something with the life God has given me. And it's really not an option. It's, it's something that I have to figure out as I go along. Now, one of the interesting things to, to note is that in answering the question, who am I, have any of us really figured that out 100%? I don't think so. Did Jesus have it figured out 100% as he lay in the crib? I don't think so. He's part of, a human, of the human race. He is fully human and fully divine. But what does it mean to be fully human? You're on a journey. You're trying to figure things out. As a 12-year-old, Jesus was lost in the temple and got in trouble with his mom and his stepfather, Joseph. And, uh, he, and it says in the scripture, well, he went back to Nazareth with them where he grew in wisdom and age. Notice that. He grew in wisdom and age. He had to learn, he had to discover, he had to seek out his Father's will. It is why Jesus prayed to seek out from his perspective what it is his Father was asking of him. And so that's who we are. We've been given time and space and talent by God to use. And we are, it's not all about us. It's not all about what we, we think we need or we demand because we want it. It's about conforming as best we can to what God wants of us. And in reality, when we do that, we are taking the best care of ourselves that we can do. I conclude with a prayer that I really like from Thomas Merton. Thomas Merton, we might say, was a mystic of the 20, 20th century. And he was a, a, a monk who wrote some amazingly insightful things. This is his prayer as he looked upon his life. O oh Lord God, I have no idea where I'm going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I actually am doing so. But I believe that the, the, the desire to please you does in fact please you. 
And I hope I have that desire in all that I'm doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you always that I may seem lost and in the shadow of death I will not fear. For you are ever with me and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. We are to seize the day, to use the time, the space, and the ability God has given us. And when we do that, God is with us to bring us to where we need to be. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, God substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We have heard God's word and reflected on the scripture with confidence and trust in this God who is for us and with us. The, we pray these prayers of petition. For Pope Francis and all members of the church, that we may manifest Christ's compassion by lives of generous service, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For all people of the world, that we may reach out and extend mercy as God has shown us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, suffering, or dying, that they may be friends and that they may know Christ's love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here to walk with Jesus through death to new life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, giver of all good gifts, Help us use what we've been given in service of your will and to assist one another in our journey to your home. We ask this through Christ our Lord. I do have some announcements here before we begin with the rest of the Mass. Uh, Father Bob wanted me to thank you for your donations to our Thanksgiving food events scheduled for November 21st. We can use more food, and there's still plenty of room on the tables uh, here as you come into the church for more food. Uh, please deliver your food by this Friday, November 20th. For more information, pick up a flyer or check it out on our website. The flyers are also on the table. You'll notice them as you leave. <laughs> Thank you. 
my brothers and sisters that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, that what we offer in sight of your majesty may bring to us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting life and happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And given the, ele the election process our country has just been through, I thought we would pray this morning a Eucharistic prayer of reconciliation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world. It is through our Lord Jesus Christ that though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, we know that by testing us, you change our hearts and prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your Spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again, and adversaries join hands and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love. Revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with choirs of, of, of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the Word that brings salvation. He's the hand you extend to sinners. He's the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we ask you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, at whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when he was about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, 
and giving the chalice to his disciples, said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. In song, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of his death and resurrection, who, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have given to us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly ask you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to give us his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May, may, your, may he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, with all bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with your brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to entrust our lives to God as we would a father who loves us powerfully and perfectly. With confidence, we say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom in accord with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let's give each other a sign of peace.
my friends, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm not. My friends, in anticipation of the communion we share, let us pray in thanksgiving. There are those among us today, though not here physically to receive Holy Communion, can receive it spiritually through this communion of God's love. And so we pray this spiritual communion prayer. Lord Jesus, you are present in the gift, your body and blood, which we celebrate in Eucharist, since at this moment we are not physically present at your altar to receive you sacramentally. We open our hearts to you as we receive you spiritually. As we embrace you with our love, you embrace us with your love. And so now, in holy communion with you and one another, as the united body of Christ, we ask this prayer in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We have partaken of gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. These things we ask through Christ our Lord. As we share this communion together, the Lord be with you. And may the blessings of Almighty God descend upon you and remain with you always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, then, we share the Eucharist of Jesus our Lord. 